you've probably seen a bunch of these iceberg videos circulating on YouTube for the past couple of years. But if you haven't seen any of these before, let me just briefly explain to you guys what an iceberg video is. Basically, you have an iceberg and the most common information or myths about a topic are at the top. And the deeper down you go on the iceberg, the more obscure, weird and unknown the topics get. In today's video, I'll be covering the fitness iceberg from top to bottom, containing a combination of myths, facts and theories from multiple portions of the fitness industry. And of course, I'll do my best to explain everything as we go along. Now, this video took a lot of time and effort to make. I literally spent two weeks just writing the script, so if you enjoy it, make sure to leave a like and a comment to help the algorithm. But first, let's head right into the complete fitness, myths and theories iceberg. At the very tip of the iceberg, we will start off with spot fat reduction. This means training only a specific part of your body will make you lose or remove fat from that area. The most common example of this is belly fat and it's been one of the biggest scams in the fitness industry for ages that you can just do a crap ton of ab exercises and you'll magically get visible abs. This would make sense to most people considering it'd be logical for your body to break down fat storage from the most local area to provide for energy. But as much as we all like that to be true, no study, sadly, has ever been able to report it. Most of you have probably heard of Ziz or at least seen pictures or videos of the guy online. Ziz, or Aziz Shavarshin, was an Australian bodybuilder and probably the first viral fitness persona on the internet who inspired thousands of people back when he was still alive. And after dying very young in 2011, combined with his crazy lifestyle, he sparked a large movement in the fitness industry revolving around the Ziz lifestyle, just having fun, looking good and being a chad. There's a theory revolving around how he died and many claim it was because of performance enhancing and party drugs, which most likely played a larger role in his death, but the leading cause was likely his undiscovered genetic heart defect. It's a fucking act, there is no Ziz. You've probably heard from worried moms, coaches and every single Facebook comment section on training ever that lifting heavy weights before you're fully grown will stunt your growth. AKA, it'll prevent you from growing to your full potential height. The most common theory regarding this is that you could injure your so-called growth plates, which is the area at the end of your bones that determine how long and what shape your bones will have as you grow up. However, a bunch of studies have investigated the relationship between heavy lifting in adolescence and height, and none have ever confirmed this myth. The anabolic window is a supposed time frame of 30 to 60 minutes after a workout where your body supposedly can utilize protein more effectively for muscle building purposes. Supposedly, if you don't eat protein until after your anabolic window runs out, you will have wasted that training. As a youngster, I felt like I had to get a protein shake in immediately after every workout just for that purpose. But today I know that it's just a disproven myth and that it's actually the daily or even weekly protein intake that actually matters, as so-called muscle protein synthesis is very active up to over 3 days after a workout. In the fitness community, many of us participate in strength sports, the most well known of which are powerlifting, weightlifting, strongman, arm wrestling and even crossfit. And all of these sports have their own subcultures which are honestly very interesting and could definitely make for iceberg videos themselves. So leave a comment if you want me to dive into those in the future. More on this later. Muscle hypertrophy literally just means building muscle, either in the number of active muscle cells or just by getting bigger muscle cells. Muscle hypertrophy is caused by a plethora of factors, but to summarize them all into one primary factor, we provide resistance to the muscle during contraction, either dynamic, as in eccentric and concentric movements, or isometric, also called static muscle contractions, where the muscle doesn't actually move. In order to continuously experience muscle hypertrophy over time, you should utilize a bunch of different training variables and progressively overload the work being performed in some way, shape or form, either with increased resistance, a longer time under tension with that resistance, you can also modulate rest time, sets and repetitions total, etc. 
the possibilities are honestly endless, and most of us who go to the gym ultimately either strive for or experience muscle hypertrophy in some way. More on this later. Bulking and cutting are words you'll find quite prevalent in any fitness community. They refer to your calorie intake compared to your base metabolism. In simple terms, if you eat more than you burn off, you are so-called bulking, and if you eat less than you burn off, you are so-called cutting. The point in the middle is where your body weight will stay consistent and is called maintenance. The theory that muscle will turn into fat if you stop training is long overdue, but there is actually some weight behind it. The theory states that if you get older or stop training, your lean muscle tissue will be broken down as a source of energy and turned into fat storage. One of the many reasons for this theory is that many athletes, especially strength athletes, tend to gain a lot of body fat after retiring or if they get injured. The reason for this is because they're probably used to a very high daily caloric consumption, meaning that if they stop exercising, they'll likely also just decrease their average metabolic rate. In other words, they'll end up in a calorie surplus and thereby gain fat while also losing muscle mass since they are not exercising enough anymore. Nucleus overload is a form of training or even a training method which seeks to increase the number of nuclei found within the muscle cells and thereby induce more muscle hypertrophy over time. However, despite being renowned as a new and revolutionary training method, nucleus overload only seeks to induce a larger amount of so-called metabolic stress which is one of the primary drivers of muscle hypertrophy. And this is normally just done through low rest times and high amounts of repetitions which do ultimately give similar results as conventional strength training, but is in no way superior. However, utilizing nucleus overload specific training and putting it into your training routine is definitely not a bad idea. A fake natural is a term used within the fitness industry to describe someone who takes performance enhancing drugs of some sort, but claims to not take anything, aka they claim to be natural. This has spiked a subgenre of fitness content titled Natty or Not, where influencers speculate and argue regarding which physiques are naturally achievable. However, more recently, many claim that fake naturals are diluting what a natural physique can actually look like, and thereby many actually natural lifters are being put down by a community of beginner lifters who have these forced thoughts that nobody can pass a certain threshold as a natural lifter. Muscle soreness is pretty normal following a grueling workout, and it's theorized that it means you'll experience greater results by being sore after a workout. However, we still don't know exactly the true basics of what causes muscle soreness, as it seems to be very multifactorial. The primary cause of muscle soreness is probably just a bunch of small muscle tears that occur when training, which causes some inflammation and pain and swelling within the muscle. However, there hasn't ever been found a clear link between muscle soreness and actual gains, as it's usually just a matter of doing something you're not used to and the muscle and surrounding tissues adapting to it. Westside Barbell is a gym in Columbus, Ohio, which was founded by world-renowned powerlifter Louis Simmons, may he rest in peace, back in 1987. Today, the gym is legendary for producing and facilitating some of the strongest people in the world, and it has become famous for its own style of training, mixing old-school training methods with modern scientific principles. Their style of training usually includes taking what has worked for elite athletes in the past, and passing it down to the next guys in line, and utilizing small tweaks to improve over time. Louis Simmons himself was particularly known for, despite owning one of the most hardcore gyms in the country, to take in outsiders and help fellow strength athletes who were struggling. So that's just when I died, it was the club will die. So, but I'm not planning on dying just yet. Faster training burns more fat. This theory is a bit misunderstood in my honest opinion. You see, fasted cardio means your glycogen storages are likely much smaller than if you would consume a meal beforehand, aka your body might be forced to produce more of the ATP for performing that cardio from fat rather than glycogen storages. 
However, these storages will fill up rather quickly if you're not in a calorie deficit over time, and the same goes for the glycogen. So yes, you will technically burn more fat temporarily, but it's still up to the calories you consume on that day, week, or even month that will ultimately decide if you get leaner or not. You've probably seen a lot of those posts on social media where you have three different body types, which are normally presented as an ectomorph, a mesomorph, and an endomorph. The theory is that these body types are purely based on genetics and that if you have a certain body type, you should eat and train a certain way. For example, if you have the genetics of an ectomorph, you'd supposedly have a hard time building muscle, and have a very high base metabolism, but in reality it's actually the other way around. You are an ectomorph because of how you eat and exercise, not because you're just skinny regardless. Basically these body types are just meant to describe how a body looks and nothing more. The Lunk Alarm is an infamous piece of the Planet Fitness Gym franchise. The Lunk Alarm became well known on the internet following a series of commercials from Planet Fitness which seemingly displayed gym bros as unintelligent brutes who make the gym a worse place. Nice muscle shirt bro. The skin is in bro. Guys with bice and tries bro. Ironically that's what their so-called Lunk Alarm seeks to depress. A lunk is slang for a dedicated gym goer and is mostly used as a derogatory term for meatheads. As such, each Planet Fitness has a lunk alarm system and staff that are instructed to turn it on whenever they see someone who fits their so-called lunk persona, either lifting heavy or making noise at the gym. The alarm sounds more like an air raid siren than anything. This is... Like really? A pen? And in recent times, many Planet Fitness gyms have stopped using it. The statement that stretching prevents injury is a double-edged sword. On one end, it would make sense that in order to avoid muscle-based injuries, mobile and stretchy muscles would allow you to hyperextend and stretch a muscle more often, and thereby have more degrees of freedom when performing an exercise, running, jumping, and so on. But for one, Stretching a cold muscle could itself lead to a minor injury for initiating the workout, and two, a stretch muscle is also actually a more relaxed muscle, meaning your muscles would likely have less tension on them when performing certain movements, putting you at a higher risk of other types of injuries. This one is pretty simple. It refers to that doing any form of cardio, specifically high intensity cardio, will result in muscle atrophy, aka you will lose muscle mass. This is of course very untrue and I personally don't actually think people believe in this anymore. The only reason this could be the case for some people is if you do very very extensive cardio, so much so that it will inhibit your strength training. But overall, you'll probably be able to handle more training volume by having a decent cardiovascular capacity and health. The Iranian Hulk is a 31-year-old strength athlete called Sayad Garibi, who went viral on social media a few years back after posting a plethora of pictures of himself next to everyday objects to portray how large of a man he was. Unfortunately for him, his positive fame was short-lived, as he was shortly exposed for manipulating his photos to appear larger than he really was. More recently, he agreed to a full-on boxing match with social media personality Martin Ford, and during a physical confrontation between the two, it was clear that the Iranian Hulk was nothing more than an Iranian hoax. More on this later. In the strength sport community, particularly in powerlifting, the sumo deadlift stance is often used both in and outside of competition, because it can aid certain lifters to lift more than their conventional deadlift counterparts. However, in more recent times, the sumo deadlift has been criticized, most often by beginner lifters, calling it cheating following a joke made by Mr. Olympia, Chris Bumstead, in a Q&A session. Why do people consider sumo deadlift cheating? And do you? Well, they consider it cheating because it is cheating. To explain this further, a sumo deadlift isn't exactly cheating, it's simply just another way of performing the same movement, and some people are more mechanically efficient at the sumo deadlift based on their own build. 
As such, there is a clear distinction between lighter lifters pulling sumo more often, while heavier lifters tend to pull conventional more often because the sumo stance would not be as efficient. The sumo deadlift does however benefit more from softer barbells and bumper plates, while a stiff bar sumo would be just as hard on average for both stances. Megarexia, commonly referred to under the umbrella term body dysmorphia, is a mental condition where a person has a skewed view of their own appearance. In the case of megarexia, which mostly occurs in men, you will believe yourself to be smaller and scrawnier than in reality. In recent times, many have claimed that the prevalence of megarexia has increased due to unrealistic expectations of oneself because of the fitness content that is produced on social media platforms such as Instagram and TikTok. Dry scooping is when you take any sort of powder form supplement, most commonly pre-workouts or creatine, and consume it without drinking water. Dry scooping is generally not recommended for two reasons. One, it's a choking hazard, especially with bigger scoops. And two, pre-workout and creatine both work better when ingested with water. So dry scooping doesn't actually hold any real benefit unless your goal is to ingest pre-workout as fast as humanly possible. Gyms don't want you to come. The theory that gyms don't want you to come is rooted in economics and states that commercial gyms such as Planet Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness and the likes don't want people to actually come train at their facilities. Now at first hand this wouldn't make much sense given that these gyms generally offer training sessions and have personal trainers willing to help. But on the other hand if the gym was completely full all the time that would make it less appealing for most people. In other words, it's better for the gym if members pay, but don't actually show up. This is also believed to be why the memberships at these gyms are very cheap, since people just perceive paying $10 a month as a minor inconvenience, and would therefore rather keep paying, even if they only show up maybe once or twice a month. Throughout the ages, there's always been tales of men performing incredible feats of strength, everything ranging from Milo of Croton, who, who supposedly ran a whole mile while carrying a bull, to more modern feats like Paul Anderson squatting 1,200 pounds. However, there are few stories similar to the one of Louis Cyr, who is often referred to as the strongest man who ever lived. Cyr was a Canadian strongman in the late 19th and early 20th century, and some of his supposed feats of strength include pressing a 313 pound dumbbell overhead, restraining horses with just one arm, backlifting over 4000 pounds, and lifting 550 pounds with one finger off the floor. And to this day, a statue of Louis Cyr still stands in Montreal to memorize his feats, and in 2013, a movie was made in his honor. Safe to say a lot of people believe that Louis Cyr of that time could actually compete with today's strongman in the world's strongest man competition. With all the technology available in the modern world and ability to manipulate photos before being published, a lot of us are now on the edge whether or not to trust the legitimacy of the online transformation pictures and videos we find on YouTube. Back in 2012, fellow YouTuber Furious Pete made a video showcasing how drastically the body could actually change in just a few hours, with the goal of potentially making a lot of money from transformation videos just like the one he made. And now there's been a stigma for these transformation videos online, there's since been several other YouTubers who have replicated this just to show how easy it is to manipulate the photos you post on social media. And there are plenty of examples of influencers editing their pictures quite drastically, still going on today. The so-called mind-muscle connection is a Jimbro term used to describe the feeling of internally focusing on a working muscle. For a while, the mind-muscle connection was believed to not be of any use, as it would not necessarily impact the myofibrillar, the myofibrillar fibrillar contractions occurring within the muscles when training. But recent articles have actually showcased that, to a degree, Using an internal focus on the working muscle, you could actually make small alterations to the factors that affect muscle hypertrophy.
Synthol is an oily substance consisting of MCT and alcohol, which is used to cosmetically enhance the look of muscles. It is normally marketed as posing oil and therefore it's not technically illegal, but if injected can be very dangerous. In recent times, synthol has primarily been used by bodybuilders, or otherwise by those suffering from crippling body dysmorphic conditions, mostly men. It's normally injected into the arms, traps or shoulders, although it can technically be injected anywhere. Several synthol users have over the years gone viral on social media, although most of them are actually already dead, partially because of the oily injections. More on this later. Every man with access to the internet has probably heard of the term nofap before. And I don't believe I need to explain it, but nofap can be a lifestyle in which you avoid blowing the meat flute for weeks, months or even years, with the primary goal of increasing testosterone. While nofap could improve certain mental aspects of one's character, semen retention in any way has never been proven to actually increase testosterone. Kyriakos Grizzly, also known as Kyriakos Kapakulak, is a retired Greek weightlifter who in recent years became well known in the fitness industry for his incredible yet very unconventional training style and lifts. He's gathered a solid fan base, myself included, who seemingly follow his channel just to see what weird lift he will perform next. Despite being more of a meme than anything, his lifts actually challenge some of the strongest men on the planet, such as his incredible searcher shrugs and cheat curls. And on top of being insanely strong, he has the voice of an angel. <coughs> Both myself and Jack PGM have made multiple videos showcasing this behemoth of a man and his character, so if you want to see more, we'll keep you entertained. More on this later. If you've participated in any sport which requires some sort of agility and nimbleness, you've probably heard that you should avoid excessive weight training, as it would make you slow and uncoordinated. While the origin of this theory is unknown, it's believed to derive from the fact that larger mass requires more force to accelerate, and thus a larger man would reach top speeds much slower than a lighter man and thereby get outrun in most aspects of sport. But in recent times, several articles have been published on the matter showcasing that maximal strength training has the opposite effect across every single sport, and that the athletes with the most rapid acceleration are sprinters, of course, and weightlifters. Below the surface sports of bodybuilding, powerlifting and strongman, there exists a subcategory of strength-based sports, one of which is the strict curl. Similarly to powerlifting, the goal is to curl up as much weight as possible with a standardized bar and rule set. You stand up against the wall with your head, butt and shoulders in contact with the wall and you curl the bar up until your forearms are perpendicular to the floor. The strict curl has become very popularized in the last 4-5 to five years via promotion from other fitness influencers such as Nick Strength and Power and Larry Wheels. The current strict curl world record is held by both American Leroy Walker and Russian Nizami Tagiev at 114 kilos. Six pack shortcuts used to be one of the biggest channels in the fitness community, led by this very handsome manly man called Mike Chang. The channel focused on making workout videos and nutrition advice alongside selling training programs. The channel used to be everywhere on YouTube by spamming advertisements using clickbaity titles such as Scientists in China have discovered a revolutionary new shortcut to six-pack abs. And at some point they were actually banned from YouTube because they didn't follow the regulations for advertisements, scams and practices. Six-pack shortcuts tried selling the idea that you can lose fat just by using their methods, which included specific workouts and supersets which could be performed at home. Their practices ended up being exposed and Mai Chang himself actually quit working with the channel sometime in 2015. How much the channel ended up actually making because of these scams is currently unknown, and Six Pack Shortcuts has later been rebranded to sixpackabs.com, although they are no longer as active on social media. In 2021, a series of pictures went viral over the internet showcasing this insanely masculine figure from the Sleek and Tears photography project. This man was later called GigaChad, and he became a cultural online sensation overnight. But following the rise of this memeable figure, 
it came to light that these photos from Sleek and Tears, although somewhat edited, were actually of a real person and Russian bodybuilder and fitness model Ernest Kalimov. Now it's very hard to actually find unedited pictures of him online, but it goes to show that GigaChad is in fact a real person or at least based off of one. Jack 3D or Jacked was one of the most well-known supplements in the fitness industry back in the early 2010s, primarily because it contained a very potent stimulant, namely 1.3-dimethylamine, also known as DMAA. The pre-workout was so strong, it was deemed to basically be legal meth. Following the ban of DMAA by the US Food and Drug Administration, Jack 3D was banned from all supplement stores in 2013 following a series of actual deaths related to the pre-workout itself. One of which was British marathon runner called Claire Squires during the 2012 London Olympics. Despite going out of production over a decade ago, there are still traces of the original Jack 3D spread across the internet, and it has become perhaps the most infamous supplement in the fitness industry. Most of you know Arnold Schwarzenegger, the most famous bodybuilder perhaps of all time. And some of you may know that he said in Pumping Iron, which was filmed in 1975, that he wanted to retire to focus more on things like acting. Well, after retiring in 1975, he did other stuff for about 5 years, before setting a goal that in 1980 he would once again participate in the Mr. Olympia competition and go for his 7th title. There he would compete against the likes of the reigning Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane, alongside Mike Menser, Tom Platz and Chris Dickerson. However, Arnold didn't actually have long to prep leading up to the competition, which was held in Sydney. And as such, he lacked a lot of his trademark size and he was nowhere near his best in terms of conditioning. But Arnold still managed to actually pull off the win just in front of Chris Dickerson. This resulted in the other bodybuilders as well as the audience booing the results and boycotting the Olympia the following year. Many of the competitors were very outspoken that they had been victimized through politics given that Arnold was actually a promoter of the Olympia competition for years prior. It didn't exactly help that the following year, his best friend Franco Colombo went on to win his second title, arguably in worse shape than Arnold. Now here's the man. A lot of emphasis on the upper body. Not a whole lot down below, but I'm biased and you know that. The V-Shred controversy is very similar to a modern-day version of the aforementioned six-pack shortcut scandal. The YouTube channel V-Shred is run by a corporate team with fitness guru Vince Sant acting as the face of the brand. While the six-pack shortcuts channel was controversial for spamming false advertisements and selling expensive basic programs online, the V-Shred brand does this, but more. Everything from stealing content from Athlete X to charging people more than they signed up for, the V-Shred brand has become very infamous in parts of the fitness industry. What is scary, however, is the misleading advice of the channel, and if you actually take a watch through some of the older videos on the channel, which I highly advise against, you will notice a ton of both contradictions and poor advice splattered into semi-poorly edited videos designed to hook you onto buying V-Shred programs. Although the channel isn't nearly getting as many views as his fitness competitors, the brand seemingly increases in sales every single year, and it's likely from people who are either very new to training or those who don't work out at all, who are quite oblivious to the poor information they are receiving. Fellow YouTuber Josh Brett actually made an entire video just on this, so I suggest looking that up to get more information on the topic. Hydrated Eddie Hall is a meme within the fitness community referring to 2017 World's Strongest Man winner Eddie Hall and his ability to consume any amount of liquid on the planet and still remain dehydrated. Rumors have it that the only thing stopping the sea levels from rising is Eddie's incurable dehydration, and some claim that he could have actually deadlifted more than 600 kilos if he was ever properly hydrated.
The current world record in the raw bench press is held by American Julius Maddox at 355 kilos or 782.6 pounds. However, there is one man who has actually benched more and on camera, although out of competition. Iranian Daniel Samani actually hit a crushing 365 kilos or 804.6 pounds bench press. However, despite seemingly using Aleiko calibrated plates, a lot of people have claimed Daniel to be using fake weights to achieve his results. He has not yet competed with the goal of breaking the world record, but maybe he will do so soon. Man, that's another one of those things, man, like... Part of me thinks it's uh, part of me thinks he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Then another part of me is like, you know, how long has he been competing? Rich Piano was at one point perhaps the most famous guy in the fitness and bodybuilding industry. Having over a million subscribers on YouTube back in 2016, he was the subject of the best comment section on YouTube perhaps ever. And despite his sometimes scary looking appearance, Rich was actually one of the most wholesome guys in the fitness scene. In 2017, Rich was put in a medically induced coma after collapsing during a haircut, and the reported cause of death was heart disease, likely due to cardiac hypertrophy, although there were several speculations saying that he died because he snorted pre-workout prior to his haircut. His videos are still available online, and his bigger body the day series remains iconic in the fitness scene today. Connor Murphy was and still is a well-known name in the fitness industry. He came onto the YouTube scene in 2016 and he started going viral with a combination of pranks and Omegle based videos which showcased his physique. His first viral hits were his fake shirt pranks where he would ask random girls on the streets to guess the color of his shirt underneath his jacket and after failing to guess he would then remove his shirt and show their reactions. Over time his channel picked up more and more followers and he actually reached 1 million subscribers on his main channel in 2017. This was when his videos started changing. Over time his subscribers started to notice subtle changes to his physique, claiming that he didn't look as impressive anymore and started losing his hair. This threw his status as a natural fitness influencer into conspiracies, claiming that he was now just off cycle and later these assumptions were actually proven to be correct by Connor himself. The main turning point for his channel came in 2020, when his content started changing quite rapidly, and seemingly out of nowhere, he said in a video that he wanted to perform a spiritual fast for I believe it was 40 days, meaning he would only drink water and consume zero food over one month, during which he would stream his entire day 24-7. Both during this fast and shortly thereafter, Connor would publish a series of disturbing videos and even go missing for a few weeks, claiming that he was no longer alive. Over time, he would actually stoop to new weird highs and lows, and even go as far as doing adult movies and having intercourse with other guys, which nobody thought was in his character at the time. The entire symbol of this period in his channel can be described in three words. Divine Protein Shake. His Divine Protein Shake. Connor is now back to making more of his old content, but the engagement that he once had is gone and is unlikely to return anytime soon. The physical activity paradox is a strange situation where physical activity seemingly both impairs and promotes health. In recent times, a couple of large studies investigating the benefits of physical activity have found that those who work physically demanding jobs experience more chronic pain and are more prone to injuries, diseases, and sick leave than people who are sedentary. At the same time, a plethora of articles have found that physical activity actually reduces the risk of pretty much every disease out there and reduces pain and inflammation among amongst every single age demographic. This dilemma was thereby called the physical activity paradox, and the reason why some activity actually inhibits health while the other promotes it is that occupational physical activity has a long duration with low intensity and generally worse conditions, while occupational activity is performed as leisure time activity with higher intensity room for progressive overload, and enough recovery. To boot, it has actually been reported that those who work physically demanding jobs still do benefit from adding leisure time training to their daily routine.
The current squat world record is held by American powerlifting legend Ray Williams, who squatted 490 kilos, aka 1,080 pounds, completely raw. At this competition, Jay did pass his mandatory drug tests, and he has not ever received a negative test prior to this record. And what is astonishing about this record is that it's actually higher than the untested squat record, which is held by Russian Andrei Malanichev at 5 kilos lower, even with knee straps. And I guess it really makes you just think. The 8 hour arm workout is exactly what it sounds like. Before his death, Rich Piana said that back when he competed in professional bodybuilding, his arms were by far his weakest muscle group, and in order to bring them up, he structured an insane 8 hour arm workout consisting of 16 mini workouts with small breaks in between, during which you would consume a total of 16 small protein shakes. Supposedly this workout could result in gaining an entire inch around your arm, although the process itself would be rather tough. One of my deep dark secrets, a lot of people have probably heard of this, but um, it's basically an eight hour arm workout. They say you'll never be as big as your pump. Whenever you train any muscle group, blood rushes to that local area and it enlarges the muscle temporarily to provide enough oxygen and nutrients for it to meet the demands of your training. And when you see yourself in the mirror, you will strive to become that version of yourself, but in the end, your pump will always be bigger than you. And that alone will cause you to strive for unachievable goals forever and ultimately make you see yourself without a pump as small and weak, creating body image issues along the way. This is why we now have the term pump cover for clothes to hide your physique and you will only remove them once you have a desired pump. Gracie M. Barbosa is a Brazilian model famous for her well-sculpted physique. In 2017, she became the topic of the month after posting a series of training videos squatting with what seemed to be 5 plates or more per side, which would make her literally the strongest woman alive. What was odd wasn't just the sheer weight itself, but also the form she actually utilized relative to the supposed weight how the place looked and how the setup looked as a whole. Although she has yet to come forward to admit using fake weights, she is still doing it to this day and is sometimes referred to as the female Brad Castleberry. Hypnosis is a state of reduced peripheral awareness. In other terms, you're in a state where your brain isn't correctly connecting sensory information to the peripheral working muscles of your body, and as such can only be properly controlled by external stimuli in the sense of being touched or spoken to. Back in the 1970s and 80s, while preparing for the upcoming Mr. Olympia competition, well-known bodybuilder Tom Platz would seemingly let himself be hypnotized prior to some of his hardest training sessions, as it, according to himself, allowed him to push himself to the absolute human limit in terms of training effort. There is this one video which can be found online of Tom Platz actually being hypnotized, followed by one of the most grueling leg days you've probably ever seen. While in this state, Tom was screaming stuff like kill me and die die die, while going all out on the leg extension. Notably throughout the entire duration of the video, his eyes remained closed. <laughs> The Larry Wheels curse refers to that training with Larry Wheels will result in you getting injured in some way, shape or form. This has become a meme within the fitness community following a series of mishaps when bodybuilders and influencers have collaborated with Larry Wheels. The most famous of these injuries is perhaps the pectoral rupture sustained by bodybuilder Ryan Crownley, and the curse is somewhat attributed to that training with Larry Wheels itself is a big deal. And as such, you would be more likely to push your own limits more when training with him likely increasing the risk of injury in the process.
This one is quite simple. A Bollywood celebrity called Ayushman Kurana went on a podcast with the YouTuber Beer Biceps, during which the topic of supplements and health came up. At that point, Ayushman came out and said that it takes three years to digest one scoop of whey protein powder, during which the whey would just simply lay around in your body, which I think we all know is complete BS. But the fact that a lot of people actually took his advice seriously just shows how little science matters and how large of an influence you could have when saying silly things like this. Protein shakes are really bad. Like, it can takes, you elaborate? It takes three years to digest one scoop of protein shake, by the way. Palomboism is a term named after bodybuilder Dave Palombo and is used to describe bodybuilders with abnormally large midsections compared to their arms and legs. Palomboism usually starts to be noticeable as bodybuilders get older, as it is partially a natural effect of aging, but it's also affected by hernias and enlarged organs, as well as bloating. Palomboism has in recent times been popularized by YouTubers such as Louis Marco, and it's still somewhat used in bodybuilding. Also known as the man whose arms exploded, bodybuilder Greg Valentino used to have the title of the world's largest arms back in the day. Greg used to be a natural bodybuilder and looked pretty classical back then, but despite looking good, Greg had an unhealthy obsession with getting bigger. Standing at 5 foot 5 inches tall, he claimed being a shorter guy further promoted his body dysmorphia, and as such he started injecting synthol into his arms after turning 36 because he felt like he couldn't get any bigger otherwise. Over years of synthol abuse, one of his arms got infected, and instead of going to the hospital, Greg decided to operate on himself by training out the pus, although with the same needle over and over again. This resulted in his arm getting severely damaged and it started swelling up, which almost caused him to having it amputated at some point. Following the hospitalization related to his arm, Greg was additionally arrested for supposedly selling anabolic steroids just to boot. At their biggest, his arms measured 28 inches. The Colorado Experiment was an article published in 1973 with the goal of producing the largest amount of muscle mass on a man within 28 days using high intensity strength training. The subject in this case would be professional bodybuilder Casey Viator. The training he would perform was supervised by Arthur Jones himself and would consist of 50% eccentric only exercises. At the start of the intervention, Casey weighed in at 167 pounds, standing at 5 foot 8 and 20 21 years old, and after the first week alone, based on the body scan measures and weight measures, he gained an astonishing 27 pounds of muscle, as his body fat sank by 7 pounds and his weight increased by 20. That is 3.9 pounds of lean tissue per day. After 28 days, Casey Viator had gained 63 pounds of lean tissue, averaging 2.2 pounds per day. However, the Colorado experiment received a lot of backlash from the science community following the intervention. For one, it's believed that the subject Casey Viator was originally in much better shape, but detrained himself prior to the intervention to make the results as large as possible. In addition to the fat measurement tools being faulty, giving him a score of just about 2% at the end of the study as well. With all the side factors involved, it's plausible to say that Casey Viator gained a heck ton of muscle mass by participating in the Colorado experiment. Denise Rutkowski was an American female bodybuilder who competed in the late 1980s and 1990s at the highest level. She holds an Olympia runner-up placing alongside winning the Jantana Classic in 1993. However, Denise is not particularly famous for her successful bodybuilding career, but rather because of a mugshot taken in 2012 after being arrested, where she looked nothing like her older figure after retiring from bodybuilding 20 years earlier. The testosterone and other substances that she used during the time made her spring facial hair and very masculine features, and her downfall is often called the biggest downfall of a female bodybuilder ever. You're known as Mr. Big to the whole world. Why isn't Victor Richards going into the Olympia? Uh, because I believe before you could be able to compete with other people, you gotta be able to compete with yourself first. Going by the title of Mr. Big, 
Victor Richards is perhaps the biggest what-if in bodybuilding history. At only 15 years old, Victor dwarfed pretty much any top-level natural bodybuilder today, and that after just lifting for a couple of months. And he was supposedly natural until he started competing at age 18. However, this wasn't in the early 2000s or even late 90s. Victor started competing at age 18 in 1982, where he ended up placing second, and he only competed a total of four times following that placement, while winning every single show. But notably, none of these shows were even close to the Olympia level. Back in 1988, for a documentary about the 88 Mr. Olympia, Victor was interviewed and asked why, despite being 50 pounds heavier than the reigning Mr. Olympia champion Lee Haney, why he didn't even compete. And he said that he would not compete at the Olympia until he had reached a certain level that he himself was happy with. And at this point, Victor Richards supposedly weighed in at 330 pounds in almost contest condition. And in 1994, he participated in a guest posing alongside some of the pro bodybuilders at the time, including Dorian Yates. After which, he apologized to Yates because he believed that he had made him look small. To this day, Mr. Big is still around, but since he has never competed on the big stage, very few still remember his name. So, is Victor Richards perfect? He'd be the first to say no. But he'd also say, why not try? Janoi Kresva Janoi Kresva is an inside joke from the Delray Misfits, who were a group of bodybuilding enthusiasts with a YouTube channel, including some wacky and lovable personalities such as Big Lenny and most famous Jason Genova, who himself used to create a bunch of quotes that would be used throughout in the Del Rey Misfit videos, such as, it's sick, it piss. And one of the lesser known is Genoi Kresva, which is how Jason would write his name. The Del Rey Misfits channel is still up, although they don't post as frequently anymore. Ronnie Coleman is one of the most well-known people in the fitness and bodybuilding world, as he is of course an 8-time Mr. Olympia holder, known for his insane mass and conditioning. Some would argue that in terms of competitive bodybuilding, he's perhaps the best there's ever been. But there is a big theory circulating that Ronnie's genetics were so good that he didn't even start taking PEDs until he was 30 years old, meaning he had been competing in the Mr. Olympia competition as a natural athlete. And now there's no actual proof strengthening this claim, but if you take a look at Ronnie in 2004 versus his so-called natural years in 92 and 93, it really does put things into perspective. And that is everything I'll be covering in this iceberg video and I know there's plenty of more stuff that I could easily made a part of the video, but if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more, then feel free to let me know in the comments, and goddamn, this took a lot of time to make, so uh, if you don't like the video, I'm still expecting you to comment like small back or something. Okay, I, I love you guys, bye.